Welcome to William & Mary Law School's Veterans Benefits Clinic channel. The videos on this channel are made by law school students and professors working in the Veterans Benefits Clinic at William & Mary Law School in Williamsburg, Virginia. This channel is not affiliated with the United States Department of Veterans Affairs. The information provided in these videos should not be considered legal advice applicable to your specific situation. The purpose of these videos is to give you general information about the veteran's benefits process and common sense suggestions on working within the VA to seek compensation. For more information about the Veterans Benefits Clinic, please visit our website at law.wm.edu slash veterans. Hello, my name is Mimi and I will be introducing you to the fourth video in a series of videos that is designed to provide helpful information about the Veterans Affairs Claims Process. The purpose of this video is to provide a brief summary of the current disability requirement of any veteran's benefits claim. In order to get disability benefits, a veteran must typically show three things. First, the veteran must show a current disability. Next, the veteran must show an in-service event that caused or worsened an injury or disease. Finally, the veteran must show a link between the in-service event and the current disability. This video explains in more detail the first thing veterans are required to prove, the current disability. A current disability must be presently existing. A veteran must show that he currently suffers from a disease, condition, or disability. For example, if a veteran injured his knee during active duty, he can receive benefits only upon showing that the injury is still affecting him today. The mere fact that the veteran may have suffered from a disability or injury in the past is insufficient for a benefits claim. For instance, if the veteran suffered from a rash while on active duty, but has never been bothered by that rash since leaving active duty, that rash is not a current disability. Too often, veterans make disability claims for things that were wrong with them on active duty and don't understand why the VA has denied their claim for benefits. If it was wrong with me on active duty, why can't I be compensated? is a question we often hear from veterans. Without proving that the condition is happening right now in the present, the veteran doesn't have a disease or injury that the VA can compensate him for. While there has to be something presently wrong with the veteran to be granted service-connected compensation, don't forget the side effects of an injury or disease that he suffered from on active duty may still be lingering. The residual effects of an injury or a disease can qualify as a presently existing disability. For example, if a veteran broke his ankle while on active duty, the fact that the ankle was healed does not prevent the veteran from obtaining benefits for some disease the original injury caused. In this case, if the broken ankle has caused arthritis in the ankle, the arthritis is considered a presently existing injury or disability. To show a current disability, the safest and most effective method is through competent medical diagnosis. There are four accepted methods of providing competent medical advice. First, the veteran can use a medical diagnosis obtained from a doctor or other professional. Second, the veteran can provide portions of medical treatises showing the symptoms of the disease. Third, the veteran can also use medical or scientific articles to show symptoms of the disability or disease. Fourth, if the disability is so obvious that you can see it by looking at the veteran, a witness can provide a statement that the disability exists. Turning to the first method, a veteran can use evidence provided by a person who is qualified to offer a medical diagnosis, statement, or opinion. This person does not necessarily have to be a doctor. Nurses, physical therapists, social workers, chiropractors, and the like also qualify so long as they can be considered to be competent to provide a diagnosis. Most often, veterans provide medical records from these professionals or letters provided by the medical professionals documenting that a current disability does exist and what the diagnosis is. As mentioned earlier, a veteran can also offer evidence in the form of medical articles or treatises. A veteran who is seeking disability can use these texts to show the parallels between his symptoms and the symptoms described in the texts. He can argue that the similarities show that he has the disability. You may be able to find medical articles online at a number of resource websites. Some organizations of professionals publish articles concerning specific medical diseases or conditions online. You may also find information at webmd.com or the Mayo Clinic's website. Printing off the website and providing it to the VA may be additional evidence to support the veteran's claim of a current disability. 
One more thing to consider when providing the VA with a diagnosis is that it may be important to have the doctor comment on the severity of the condition. We will discuss this issue more in the video that explains how the VA rates disabilities. Here are a few instances in which lay testimony regarding the current disability is acceptable. First, when the layperson is competent to diagnose the medical condition. An example of something that is easily diagnosable by a layperson is a missing body part. A missing finger or arm is something that a layperson or non-medical person can see and verify with their own eyes. Contrast this to a veteran who walks with a limp. While a layperson may be able to see the limp, the layperson can't tell by looking at the veteran what is actually wrong or why the veteran is actually limping. That would require a medical diagnosis. A layperson can also describe symptoms and these symptoms can support a later medical diagnosis. For instance, if the veteran's tent mates constantly complained about his horrible snoring, they could actually detail the symptoms he showed while he was stationed with them. Based on these observations, a doctor may be able to diagnose that the veteran suffered sleep apnea during service. When a veteran files a claim with the VA, the VA, by law, has certain duties towards the veteran. Among these duties is the duty to provide the veteran with a medical examination to establish the current disability. So, if a veteran cannot afford to visit the doctor or have certain diagnostic tests performed, the VA must provide an examination. However, there are certain recognized exceptions to this duty, and they include when the VA does not believe there is a reasonable possibility that the exam would assist in substantiating the current disability. For instance, a male veteran complaining of a problem that is uniquely female would not receive a medical exam because there is no possible way he could be suffering from what he claims to suffer from. Another exception to providing a medical examination is if the VA already has sufficient medical evidence to make a decision on the claim. Finally, the VA does not have to provide a medical examination when the veteran fails to provide evidence, lay or professional, that he is currently experiencing symptoms. If the VA denies a veteran's claim for disability compensation and the veteran was never given a medical examination, the veteran is entitled to know why they were not furnished a medical examination by the VA. So, in conclusion, the current disability must be presently existing. The showing of a current disability should normally be done by a recent medical evaluation, opinion, or letter. But, medical and scientific texts may also be used. Also, in certain situations, lay testimony may be sufficient to show a current disability. And finally, the veteran is entitled to a medical examination provided by the VA to support his or her claim. For more information on each of the three things you need to prove that a disability is service-connected, please see the other videos in this series. We hope this video has been helpful to you in gathering information on the claims process. For more information, check out both the Department of Veterans Affairs website at www.va.gov and the William & Mary Veterans Benefits Clinic website at law.wm.edu slash veterans. I also encourage you to watch the next video in this series. Thanks for watching, and have a good day.